This episode is made possible by the realistic online game War Thunder. Check out the game through the link in the description below. Go through that link and not only do you support this show, which is nice, but you also get a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium time as a bonus. And let's get into it. So a wise man once said, They say that the best weapon is the one that you never have to fire. I respectfully disagree. I prefer the weapon you only have to fire once. Adhering closely to this mantra, the M65 was indeed only fired once and then simply used as a deterrent in the early days of the Cold War. Why was this weapon so special, though? Well, it helps that it fired a 280mm nuclear-tipped bit of artillery with the blast power approximately of that of Little Boy. That's the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. Designed by engineer Robert M. Schwartz in 1949, the shells, in addition to being larger than anything the U.S. military had ever produced before, had to have a case some 4,000 times stronger than the aforementioned bomb dropped on Hiroshima in order for the nuke to survive the extreme forces that it would be subjected to when the weapon was fired. While you might think that designing such a round would be insanely difficult, if not just basically impossible, Schwartz reportedly had a working design ready in just 15 days. The resulting W9 was essentially a 850 pound 11 by 55 inch shell with a gun type nuclear tip capable of producing a 15 kiloton blast. Of course, there was also the problem of the US not then having a cannon capable of firing these W9 shells. Schwartz solved this problem too, drawing inspiration for the ultimate design of the M65 from German World War II era railway cannons like the Krupp K5. He also designed the M65 such that it could be transported via roads, hugely increasing the weapon's utility over railway cannons. That said, to say the M65 was cumbersome is a massive understatement. Weighing around 83 tons, let's just say that it was rather difficult to move. It required two trucks packing 375 horsepower engines, one truck on each end of the cannon, with drivers needing to be in constant communication as they drove. The top speed on this setup was a breakneck 35 miles per hour, and that's if the road was straight and reasonably flat. Its mobility was also limited by the length of the vehicle being about 80 feet, with one soldier, Jim Michelow, recalling that after getting the cannon stuck in a narrow street during transport in Germany, they ended up having to destroy several buildings in order to make the necessary turns. Despite these issues, a well-trained crew of around five people could have the cannon ready to fire in around 15 minutes with the weapon capable of hitting any target within roughly 20 miles miles with pinpoint accuracy. It likewise took only around 15 minutes to get the cannon back on the road, ready to nuke another target. As we've said, the M65 is only known to have been fired once as part of Operation Upshot Knothole, a series of nuclear weapons tests conducted at the Nevada National Security Site in 1953. In the one and only time a nuclear bomb has been shot from a cannon, during the Grable test at Frenchman Flat, the nuke flew 10 kilometers, roughly 7 miles, through the air, and then it exploded 500 feet above the ground. The resulting explosion incinerated everything within about a mile of desert, excepting, of course, a lead-lined fridge that was thrown free and released a shockwave of searing hot air that tore apart lightly armored vehicles positioned at set distances from the target area, all while several thousand soldiers, hundreds of military officials, several members of Congress, and the Secretary of Defense, Charles Wilson, all looked on in awe from about 10 miles away. Footage of this test was quickly circulated by the military as a show of force to the Soviets, and 20 M65 cannons were ordered to be created, all of which were then shipped to Europe and South Korea, where they spent around a decade being moved to various classified locations. However, with the combined advent of tactical nuclear missiles and smaller nuclear shells that could fit inside the widely used 155mm and 203mm cannons, the M65, which debuted with a bang in 1953, was quickly eliminated by 1963. And now for a bonus fact. Following on with the subject of having fun with nuclear missiles, at one point the United States had a plan to nuke the moon. If you presumed that the reasoning behind such an act was because we can, you were absolutely correct. The project was labeled a study of lunar research flights, or just Project A119, and it was developed by the US Air Force in the late 1950s. It was felt that this would be a relatively easy thing to do, and it would also boost the public perception of how the US was doing in comparison to the Soviet Union in terms of the space race. 
According to one of the leaders on the project, physicist Leonard Reifel, hitting the moon with an intercontinental ballistic missile would have been relatively easy to accomplish. Indeed, it would have been able to hit the target with an accuracy of about two miles. This accuracy would have been particularly important as military brass wanted the resulting explosion to be clearly visible from the Earth. As such, a young Carl Sagan was hired to study how exactly the cloud would expand on the moon to make sure that it would indeed be clearly visible. It was ultimately proposed that the explosion happen on the border of the visible part of the moon so that the resulting cloud would offshoot from the moon to the side and be illuminated by the sun. As we never nuked the moon, you'd probably know about that one, the project was scrapped. This was because they felt that the public wouldn't really respond favorably to the US dropping a nuclear bomb on the moon. Now look, today's sponsor, War Thunder, they're not gonna let you nuke the moon. I know, I asked them about it, let's just say I was disappointed. But the good news is that's about the only thing that's disappointing in War Thunder. War Thunder is a realistic free-to-play military vehicle combat game. It's available on PC, PS4, Xbox One. There's no need to purchase. You just download and play. In this game, there are over 1,200 historically accurate vehicles from the 1920s to the 1990s. They're all carefully built and incredibly detailed, and all the physics, it's really been sweated over, so it's just right. It's, it's really a very, very good game. Also, cool sound effects, cool music, that's a plus as well. And look, if you want to, you can just jump in real quick, play an arcade game that's useful if you don't have a lot of time, or if you want to be more realistic, you can go for some more challenging and tactical stuff, or if you're really hardcore, there's always simulator mode, but I don't know what's that like, I've never played it, I don't like getting my ass kicked over and over again, so you know, stick to arcade, or if you're feeling brave, realistic, or maybe you're a video game hero, then go for simulator, whatever, you won't see me in there. So join us on the battlefield for free using the link below, doing that supports the show and also gets you a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium time as a bonus just for registering. So support the show, support War Thunder, and thanks for watching.